Hello and welcome back to another episode of the White Sox March to October. And that might have been a way too happy and upbeat way to intro today's episode because things went very wrong the last time out. But as you can see by the perfectly horizontal line on our graph, we're on a bit of a losing streak right now. It's up to nine losses in a row. We started last episode 42 and 33. Now we're a 500 team at 42 and 42. And we don't want to slip into this pattern. We don't want to turn into the 2016 White Sox because that was a team that hadn't fully committed itself yet to a rebuild, signed some random veteran players. And for the first like month and a half of the season, they actually had one of the best records in baseball and they ended up terrible not making the playoffs at all. So we can't let that happen. We got to get things back on track and we got to do that by taking this first game against Colorado to start to right the ship. We still have a decent amount of negative momentum, a lot of snowflakes built up in that meter right now. So a, a win here, all that might do is erase that negative momentum, but that's all we can do. So that's what we have to do. So let's just see in a 1-1 tie here what we have going on up to this point. They have a solo shot from Nolan Jones. They only have two hits on the board and we have nothing but base hits. And it's Cease on the mound right now. He's gone seven, only given up the two hits. He's punched out seven also. So we'll have to see what he's looking like. He might be able to stay in this game. I also somehow missed that we are starting with a runner on first and nobody out and now we're we have a runner on third at least second and third actually i might send him home here 84 speed yeah that's plenty enough that's plenty speed right away paul de young's breaking the tie that's what we needed that's what we weren't getting in the last episode in this rough stretch here is any good swings we don't have to be done yet either i mean that's a runner on second now with nobody out and Stassi, nope, that's, I mean, he hit it pretty hard, but we can't be getting on top of it. Flip the lineup back over, though. Let's get this top half of the order doing something. Oh, but, yeah, I don't, he's not going to run that out. I really, I thought that was a good swing, too. I don't want to leave this runner out there. Mankata, you got to get me a hit. Give me this extra run. And we don't get it. Another, I mean, that's, that's the best swing of the three outs. At least we did something. Now we just got to keep it that way. And Cease is only 58 pitches in. So he's got like two thirds of his energy. Yeah, he's staying in this game. So real quick, while we're pitching here, I just wanted to clear some things up from last episode. I saw you guys talking about it in the comments a little bit. And that was how I was kind of saying that I was going to focus on like keeping these episodes between the 15 to 20 minute mark. I just want to clear things up. Like nobody is complaining if I put out a longer episode. It's just, it's all a me thing wanting to keep these episodes to a certain length, you know, both both for what I think makes the best type of episode and doesn't drag along, but also for it to be like easier for me to edit, I guess. But it's nice to see actually a pretty solid number of you guys say that you're fine if an episode goes a little long. The only reason I brought it up in the first place though last episode was just because near the start of the series, I mentioned wanting to have the episodes be between 15 to 20 minutes. And then like immediately I let them start slipping to be a little longer so the only reason i brought it up in the video was just because i had brought it up before and i just wanted to like kind of make it known that i was going to try and go back to what i originally said up and in gets him that was a really good inning from cease i was rambling on about stuff you guys probably don't even care about and he just sat him down one two three easy i couldn't quite get around on that fastball see i made one good swing with Paul DeYoung and now I can't I can't replicate that I can't build on the lead all right I'll take that I'll take it good walk worked from Luis Robert there we got some speed on now oh did Vaughn come on keep that fair that's staying fair right it is all right we got it I did get another good swing and I think that's the first one I've hit with Vaughn yet this year man I was I was locked in that at bat waited for a good pitch to hit and that's what happens now that opens up the door for dylan cease to confidently finish this game oh hang on fletcher does he want in on it too it is gonna go man some of these swings carry a lot further than they feel like they're going to off the bat but that also might be my first home run with dominic fletcher and we're going back to back hey this is what we needed though and i don't want to be done yet we've still got two outs to work with i don't know what the threshold is but another run or two and this might be considered a blowout and give us an extra fireball 
Oh, he got hit on a 2-2 count. The, the, it was a cutter, actually. Ooh, that broke. Not how I was expecting it to. I think I might have shoved the PCI in the other direction. Oh, I had a 3-0 count, but I saw that pitch floating in. I had to swing, and it just didn't break down far enough. It's okay, though. We padded our lead by a bunch. I just don't know if we quite got to blow out territory. And we got the rollover, or is it technically a rollover if they hit it the other way? I don't know. Weak ground ball. Okay, another one bounced to Duran at second base. Come on, DeYoung, make a play for me. No, that was like in between just getting to it range and diving range. I didn't know what to do. Okay, that was a little scary. Wanted to get that up at the chin. But I'll take my pop fly to win the game. And there we go. Winning or losing streak successfully snapped. And how much did we get for that? Only two? That's not going to do as much for us as I was hoping. All right, we're going to have to see what we ended up with in terms of negative momentum last episode. Because only two fireballs? Okay, it does flip it. I don't think that's going to give us any wins. But at least it takes away getting losses from the negative momentum. And we are here. We're at week 13 of 14 on scouting. And I I want to make sure that the draft is saved for next episode so i'm definitely gonna try and cut this one a little short just to make sure we don't also have the draft accidentally start all right we're gonna keep this largely the same except i swapped out who the singular scouted player was here and then we'll only have one more week of scouting after this but in the meantime what do we got going on we've lost two one one and now we get a chance to win second straight and put our slump behind us so yeah we're still 500 we did dip though. I think up to this point, we'd stayed above 500 all season. But in that last set of Sims, we lost two after my win and then won the last one. So we did technically slip under 500 just for a day, just for one game. But now we got to work to start putting some distance between us and a 500 winning percentage. And it looks like we're going to be kind of thrown straight into the fire here against Cleveland. They've got two runners in scoring position with only one out. Jared Schuster's on the mound looks like he's having his first good start since the start that I made with him and now that's kind of in jeopardy all right I am gonna go to the bullpen and I'm gonna opt to go with Brebia instead of Armstrong here because Armstrong doesn't really have a great clutch rating and right now with two runners in scoring position that's what matters is the clutch rating Oh, wow. We're trying to lay down a bunt here. All right. Bring that, uh, bring that infield in or at least halfway. Oh, he's going home on this. We can get him out there. Why would you go home on that? Now we have the force set up. They only have a runner on second. He does have some speed though out there. So it's still a threat to score on a base hit. And, and there, there it is. Like, that's just, we don't need that. Sure, I might have left that pitch where it didn't want to be. But, like, that was such a weak swing. Such weak contact off the bat. Does that really need to be a hit? There we go. All right, punched him out. Keep it tied at least. But now the offense has to show back up. Let's just do whatever damage we need to do right away. First at bat. 108 pitches in for their starter. I guess he does have a lot of energy. Okay, there we go. That was a very nice pitch. I'm lucky that I was able to do something on that. We went down 0-2. I brought it all the way back to 3-2, and then he breaks that out. Okay, and that's going to be it for him. So they're going to the bullpen. And who do we got here? Scott Barlow. Actually, though... <laughs> That reminds me, we'll we'll look into it after our game today, but our guy Joe Barlow, stuck in our AAA team, we gotta talk about him. All right, I'll take my walk. Two on here, nobody out. This is the start to something big. Oh, we got hit, we got bailed out on an 0-2 count. Base is loaded for Duran. And we draw the walk. So Scott Barlow comes in, gives up a walk, hits a batter, and gives up another walk. And that's how we take the lead. Dude, he cannot buy a strike right now. A 3-0 count with the bases loaded. There's no chance I'm swinging here. Oh, and he kept it in the zone. Ooh, and then he really made sure to keep that one in the zone. I gotta be doing damage on that. Wow. It was looking really good that we were about to put up another run there on a 3-0 count. 
Oh my god, be ready for that. You know what it is? That looks so similar to his slurve that he's been throwing, but the slurve is like way slower than that. So it's like I'm waiting back for the slurve, which that's what that one was, and now I'm out in front of it. Wow, and then he punches me out on a really nice slider. It's a really good thing this guy didn't start to, or didn't think to start throwing strikes when he first came into the game, because if he just threw every pitch in the zone, I don't think I would have done anything this inning. Wow, wait, actually, that might be good. That's gonna drop in. I just got bailed out so hard right there. Oh man, even with taking the lead, if I didn't bring more runs across, that would have been a disappointing inning with the bases loaded and nobody out, but I'll take a fluke if I can get a fluke. And Munkot, nope. I don't think I hit that as well as I thought it came off the bat, but we still put up three. That's a three run lead now. I'm gonna go to Tanner Banks here to get us through the eighth. I feel like this is a guy that I haven't used as much as I should. He's been putting up some good numbers ever since getting called up and he has a really good pitch mix. I feel like I should take advantage of that. And there we go, there's our punch out, one down. You know, I would be getting frustrated with how long this at bat is taking so far. We're about to throw nine pitches. But at this point, I know. I know better. This is J-Ram. This is how his at bats go. Just gotta wait it out. I, uh, there we go. Ten pitches, but he'll take it to end the at bat. Just wait him out. And there we go. We got that one popped up to left field. Banks with a nice eighth inning. Now let's see if we can put up at least one more run, make this not a save situation, and then we don't have to put Garrett Crochet's perfect season on the line today. Hmm. Okay, that one caught me off guard. Oh, there's no way I missed that. Tell me what I did wrong on that pitch. I was late, so I waited back too far and I was under it. So what you're saying is I saw that pitch too well. Man, I... I was even a little off on the fastball right down the middle. Now I know. Now I've learned. I do not like hitting against Nick Sandlin. All right, well, let's do it. Let's bring him in. Actually, I guess he doesn't have a perfect season because he does have a blown save. He just hasn't given up any earned runs of his own. And there we go. Got him looking. Three straight fastballs. And the slider gets another punch out. Immaculate inning is intact here. That's six pitches, two strikeouts. Oh, and we missed the zone, so we're not gonna we're not gonna get that anymore. But there we go. Slider ends it. We still strike out the side. That's a nice little win there. I don't know how much we'll get from that because we did start with the lead. Okay, we only get two. So, I mean, it's nice to be able to get a couple wins back to back like that and build up our momentum. But I kind of would also like the chance to, like, you know, get a lot at once. All right, so what's that going to do for this momentum? We stayed neutral last time, so this will get us a couple wins. Hopefully, we get a relatively quick turnaround here so we get a chance to build build it up even more what just happened there w was that their city connect logo i don't know i don't really know what just happened there but the logo changed either way we won the first two games of that series and now it's time for our final scouting assignments of the year all right and i'm just gonna put all the minds together here and hope this works out how i'm thinking it will but i'm sending everybody to scout some international relief pitchers and the hope is if we get down to the point late in the draft when we don't know who to take at least we'll know of some relief pitchers. I don't know. But we advance on from our final week. Hopefully they stop the sim before we get into anything. And they do because it's time for a trade. All right. So three more offers. And I'm already looking at this first one as something that I'm really not too big on. I'm not too high on this one. I mean, we've already done a lot of work to improve our starting rotation to the point where Paul Blackburn at a 77 would only be a four overall increase from Mike Soroka, but Mike Soroka is having himself a pretty good year. So I don't really feel the need, I guess now. Actually, I should have realized that before. I probably should have taken starting pitching like off the board because we really don't need it. Although one of the guys I was targeting as a starting pitcher did come from the Marlins. So let's see if it's him and it's not him. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Man, it's tempting. But yeah, no, no, I'm not going to. He's only a rental guy for this one year. 91 one overall lefty though is always going to be tempting but not when we have to give up Jacob Gonzalez and Edgar Caro a pair 
of 21 year old 65 overall B potentials that I hope are going to be pretty good for us, especially Edgar. I mean, Edgar right now would already be our second best catcher on the roster, and he's closing in on Max Stassi pretty quick. So we're going to pass up on that one. One last shot at a trade here today from the Orioles, and it's going to be Tyler Wells, and we'd have to give up Oscar Colas. Man, this is this is tough because Tyler Wells, 76 overall, and he has a really good hits per nine rating and really good clutch rating of five pitch mix, and he's got 71 stamina. So like he'll be good as a reliever, but also if we ever need to plug him into the starting rotation, that would work. And then on top of that, he's locked down for the next, well, three and a half years including this season for cheap too only for two million dollars for what right now would tie or maybe just be our number one relief pitcher in terms of his overall yeah he actually would he'd be the highest rated because sean armstrong is a 75 crochet is a 74 wells is a 76 the only thing keeping this from being an immediate accepting of this trade is getting rid of oscar colas like in terms of what we see right here he's already 25 he's a 63 in a b potential so like comparing him to these two guys i don't want to give up you know he's four years further along in terms of his age and his overall is worse than those other two but the reason that I'm hesitating is because we all know how good he was before he got automatically sent down. I mean, dude was putting up numbers for really no reason. He's gone down to AAA and done the same thing. So the thought now of him getting a call-up player lock with the chance at an attribute boost, or maybe if we got really lucky, a fast track and then a call-up is pretty enticing. I just, I think I can't pass up on this trade though. I can't hold on to somebody just for the, the shred of hope at the potential of what he could be when we could get somebody tangible right now that's gonna I think make a pretty big difference not just now but in the long term like to get a guy this solid and have him locked up for four seasons really especially for this cheap that's a big deal I think I have to do this I think we have to part ways with Oscar Colas it hurts and it makes me wish he wasn't as good as he was at the start of this season. But I just feel like I have to be logical. And logic tells me to make this trade. So I'm going to pull the trigger on it. We're getting rid of Oscar Colas. We're getting rid of somebody else who doesn't matter. And we're taking Tyler Wells from the Baltimore Orioles. And we've just added what's now our new best bullpen arm. So we won't get to player lock as him because you don't player lock as relief pitchers. But the sim does stop here, and I think that's also going to mean that the episode stops here. But we got a little bit of progress back. We made it back to 48 and 45. I actually think we lost a half a game, though, to the Twins in that stretch. But the further we get into this season and the more wins the Twins keep racking up without losing their footing here, the more I'm thinking we might just have to uh, resort to fighting it out for a wild card spot, which this itself is not going to be an easy race to win. But anyway, Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today. Next episode, we should have the draft. We're going to be coming up on the All-Star break. We're going to be coming up on the end of the first half of the season. So that'll pretty much be the sole focus of next episode is our first draft of this White Sox March to October. So as always, guys, make sure if you enjoyed this one, hit that like button for me. If you're new, be sure to subscribe to the channel. But thanks for watching another one here today, guys. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you next time.